Hey everyone, back again with my continued thoughts on the VP Force Rhino Force Feedback Joystick. Now moving on looking at uh, mounting options and where I've got to with that, showing some, some thoughts as a new owner there. Um, I'm joined by my glamorous assistant today, Kira, in the, uh, in the background here, keeping uh, an eye on, uh, on proceedings in her own cat-like ways. Right, so what have I, what have I learnt in the process of getting it ready for mounting? Um, that there's a lot of options uh, is the is the simple answer, and that I would have benefited greatly by reading the manual, and I'll post a, a link to that in the description um, ahead of time because there's some considerations here that, that were, they're not problems; they're, they're I'm sure immediately solvable but it, it basically means I'm going to have to live with a a compromise solution in the short term until I get some of these things figured out. What I'd also say is that it's incredibly hard to try and work out in advance exactly you know a perfect mounting combination and positioning because the Rhino itself is such a large uh, device and, and very different from traditional joystick bases. So let me let me talk you through a couple of things that so I think you should be aware of. Um, the first is that you've got uh, uh, fan um, ports on the side and uh, on the front, an active fan system, uh, I think designed to kick in at around 50 degrees to keep uh, the, you know, the motors and the electronics cool uh, based on the, the force feedback load on the on the system so what that means of course is you can you know you can mount the force feedback rhino base in that direction and of course you can flip it around 180 degrees and have the for example the uh, the control knobs closer uh, closer to you um, but of course because the uh, the axis of the the joystick is is off sensor it's biased towards uh, this particular site here and the uh, you know the force feedback wheel there um, it will affect how close to you or far away the joystick base is in its mounted position and that can be a, a good or a bad thing depending on you know how long your arms are and your individual configurations whether you're going to use a desk mount a, a floor mount a sim pits or in my case the monster tech mfc flight chair uh, with the the centre mounting option that you can see uh, it, it's attached to at the moment. Um, but where I'm going with that is, of course, you know, in this configuration, we've got some 40AC aluminium profile there for the vertical mount system. If I was to reverse this 180 degrees with the fan, you know, facing uh, facing the back here. Um, I can leave the mounting system uh, where it is, but of course then the joystick base is going to be over here somewhere. Now I could bring it in closer and, and I could even flip you know, the mount around 180 degrees, but of course the closer I bring it to the, uh, to the aluminium profile, it's going to start blocking the, the airflow because it, it is, I'll show you, it's right, it's right in the middle, yeah, down here. So you do not want to be blocking access to that fan, otherwise you're going to stop it from uh, from doing its job. So that's that's the first thing. the The other thing that I've uh, noticed as well, probably the first thing that you that you come across, is you know the the very popular gooseneck uh, two hundred millimeter extension from from Verpal there attached to the to the Rhino base and in my case the CM2 uh, Mongoose grip there. But this joystick base already has a significant extension built into the device itself. You know, if this is the, the kind of, you know, the, the axis of, of, of pivot and the, um, the, the, the center that it, it rotates around, you know, you've got from there to there, already 
before considering any kind of mounting system. You know, compare that with the my CM3 mongoose base that I've been using previously. And of course, you know, you're only talking about the middle of this this case on the inside to the uh, the top of the mounting mounting grip there. So in effect, you've got from here to here, which would be let's have a look here on the measurement in about five and a half inches or fourteen centimeters head start um, before you even consider the uh, the gooseneck extension that I've got there. Um, so does that mean that this extension is potentially too long for this device? Maybe. Um, if you wanted to keep things like for like, you probably would want, and, and Verkle sell these, so you've got uh, adapters that are what, 10 centimetres, um, 100 mil, 75 mil, and either 50 or 25, I can't, I can't remember which exactly they are, maybe three extensions that would bring the height of this uh, grip uh, mounting point more more in line with the uh, what you would traditionally have with a and, and what the extensions have been designed for. But something to consider there is, you know, those extensions are straight. They're not a gooseneck extension like we have here. And I kind of like the gooseneck uh, extension, so I'd like to keep it uh, if if I can. And the consequence of doing that, of course, is then you know, the overall height of the, you know, of the base to the top of the uh, the joystick grip. I mean, look, we're looking at over 28 inches, 71 centimetres there, um, which means you have to mount the device very close to the floor on a you know, on a normal seat, or as I was saying in my, my earlier video, if you're in a, in a sim pit, you may not even have the depth to be able to do that, in which case you'd be pretty much, I think, forced to consider a, uh, a lower extension. I've not used this yet in practice, so I don't really know if that's a good or a bad thing. I'm possibly looking at it from a, you know, an external aesthetic point of view, obviously thinking about how, um, you know, helicopter and jet joysticks are in real life and thinking, you know, I, I like the goose deck perhaps more than is necessary. So that's that's something I'm going to be uh, interested in in trying out when we get the thing uh, up and running. Um, I was going to order some smaller extensions from Verpo. I'm going to go off on a tangent here uh, slightly. Uh, last year I bought uh, a number of Verpal uh, devices like the, the throttle and the CM2 base that I sh uh, CM3 base I was showing you earlier as part of their uh, they were opening a new EU production plant and they were giving out some uh, some vouchers for uh, for people that bought at that time and uh, you know those vouchers were covered for for 90 days to give you a, a 10% discount now I used that voucher when I uh, purchased the uh, the collective. You uh, might have noticed I've got some Apache uh, grip reviews uh, on on the Verpal collective. But what I didn't realise, and what they didn't say in any of the descriptions, is that those vouchers were one-time use uh, only. So um, yeah, not overly happy about that. But I'll uh, just a warning for for others: if you get vouchers from Verpal, that they probably are one-time use only. Um, um, I, Verpal, you should probably say that <laughs> in your terms and conditions, uh, you know, when you're of using that voucher. Uh, but it's not a huge deal. I can, I can guess either wait for the next promotion or, um, you know, just just swallow the uh, the cost of of getting those extensions from them. Um, but that's how I'm going to mount the device for now. Um, what else? is useful to talk about. The uh, the Monster Tech profiles that I'm using, you know, I wanted, although you can mount, although you can mount the, uh, the 
VP force uh, mounting plates uh, to a, a shorter piece of profile, either um, you know, something that's maybe only sticking out that long, um, sort of a couple of centimetres, or even I think you could mount it to the, you know, to the bottom and you know, screw up into the, into the profile because the, the screws line up there. Um, but because of the weight of this device, it's about seven, you know, six or seven kilograms, um, I wanted to have a bit more strength going all the way along the uh, the bottom there. Not entirely necessary, but it, it uh, you know it felt like the the right thing to do for stability. And that brings me on to my next topic, which is the the actual mounting plate itself. Right, so as I was saying, this is the clear that is to you there, let me get the, the device up. The mounting plate for the VP Force um, joystick, um, this one from VP Force themselves, there's quite some, there's quite a distance between where the, the Rhino base attaches with the four screws in each corner and the screw holes to attach the mounting plate to the the Monster Tech um, you know profile and, and, and mounting solution. So the distance between here and here that's about six about six centimeters two inches something like that. Um, Compared to Monster Tech's mounting plate solution, Monster Tech make and produce a mounting plate for the uh, for the Rhino base. But the, but the Monster Tech solution, these holes appear to be uh, a lot closer together. You know, probably about about here by comparison, which would allow, in this configuration here, me to pull the Rhino base further into the seat and closer to. You know, the, ver the vertical profile there and I think that might feel uh, a little uh, a little better yeah so I'm beginning to wonder whether monster Tech's base uh, mounting plate I should say sorry not the base um, might be a better solution than VP force and their mounting plates, which is a little bit cheaper, I, you know, I have to say. So I'm going to have a think about whether or not to to buy that from Monster Tech uh, them, themselves. I want, I want a couple of other things from Monster Tech as, as well, some, some custom lengths of this, uh, this aluminium profile. Um, in this particular configuration, this vertical piece that I'm using here is... Um, uh, I believe comes with the uh, the the center joystick uh, mounting product, but the the piece that I'm using at the bottom actually come is shorter and it actually comes from the control panel mounting uh, kit, which I've ended up not not using as I I discussed on my uh, Apache Collective video because I felt that the you know the weight of a throttle and a control box sitting off the side of the um, of the chair was a little bit it felt a little bit too much weight um, you know for for the chair and a bit too much movement that that was my impression anyway unless I made uh, some kind of mistake so I had some you know some some spare bits of profile now Monster Tech themselves do supply you with a you know some longer pieces of uh, profile with the center joystick mounting solution um, but either in the vertical or the horizontal let's move this back a bit so you can see it properly let's try that again either in the vertical or in the horizontal it's um it, it feels a bit too long you know and, and i could I guess cut it to size my myself because uh, uh, I'm not sure I've got the the equipment or a steady enough hand uh, to do it well without making a complete uh, a complete hash of it. I don't need it to be that long. That's um, I think 420 millimeters, 42 centimeters uh, long. That piece there. Um, 
yeah, so I wanted to, to share that with you as well. Right, let's, um, let's show you what it looks like mounted and again some of the, the compromises that I'm making at the moment until I've you know, worked with the product more. Oh, um, one thing before I do that, uh, I forgot to mention, uh, down here where the cables go in, this is the, the USB cable plugged in at the moment and then the, you know, the power delivery uh, underneath that. Um, if I'm, if I'm to bring this base closer in here to the uh, to the vertical profile, there's going to be some uh, some clearance issues fairly quickly. If I give you a, a vertical view, yeah, do you see that you're you're starting to touch even in that position the uh, the strain relief of that that USB cable. So, you know, I can't push that too much further in, you know, obviously no further than the uh, the cog and the wheel there for the force feedback system. But uh, but also so I'm not colliding and interfering with that cable itself. One option might be uh, to um, see if I can get a like a 90 degree uh, bend on the USB cable, you know, and a an adapter or plug that, that will allow for that. So I'll, I'll do a bit of research uh, on that because that might give me some more options as well. But yeah, just wanted to point that out. Right, so let me show you the device mounted. Because of its size, I actually have to adjust the, the wheels of the chair to allow enough vertical depth for it to sit into the into the base there. Okay, there you go. what it looks like from uh, from above. Now something to talk about here, another consideration, is the, the Rhino base has quite a large deflection uh, or throw, travel, whatever you want to call it, on the joystick itself. According to the manual it's something like you know, 20, 22 degrees. Um, that, that's a lot. And it's probably comparable to the the Verpal Warbird base, more so than the CM3, which only has about 15 uh, degrees. So that's in its you know, rearmost deflected position, which would bring it, you know, effectively into your um, you know into your chest and into your into your lower legs, soft bits, if you like, uh, only. Only slightly, but enough that it, it wouldn't feel natural and uh, and wholly comfortable. And then if I put it into the the fully forward position, you can probably appreciate from the uh, from the side shot there. Um, that's quite a long way forward. You know, if I was sitting in the in the chair, uh, yes, I could reach for that grip, but I'd have to lean forward off the uh, off the backrest. Um, with the side movement, again, one of the reasons I've gone for this particular height is so that I've got clearance off the, the sides of the, the seat cushion, you know, here, here and here. In fact, ideally, it could be even a little bit higher. But of course, you know, the higher that I raise the uh, the joystick base on the on the mounting platform here, you know, the higher the grip is is going to be. And you know already it's starting to feel kind of tall, which brings us back to the the earlier uh, topic about whether this um, this two hundred mil uh, extension is actually too large, and uh, and I need to to think about uh, replacing replacing that. The the other point that I wanted to bring up again, this comes from the manual and something that I should have uh, read up on more was. Uh, 
uh, you can remove, I believe it's this cover uh, here, and install into the joystick a physical limiters that reduce the, the range of motion of the, of the joystick. And that might be a solution, actually. I, I'm, I'm kind of liking that idea. Um, you know, you obviously within the simulation software itself and, um, you know, whatever programs you're running, you can set like joystick curves to say, you know, uh, that's the, the level of linear or S-curve travel. But of course, if you're sitting in there and you can physically move the joystick more, uh, I do wonder whether uh, that's going to, you know, you're going to try and try and do that. And of course, then that's not feeling very natural or true to life. So I'm going to have a think about whether or not to get some uh, some physical limiters to install into the Rhino base, because I think that will address that particular problem. According to the software, you can use the power of the motors to uh, to limit the, the range of motion uh, on the on the joystick base. Um, but then, of course, you're going to be um, working against whatever power that can be supplied to, to the motors themselves. So if you were um, particularly forceful, you would end up you know, pushing uh, beyond those limits or possibly, you know, straining unnecessarily the, the motors. I think a physical stop um, is, a, is a much better uh, answer. I don't think they're too expensive. I, I, I guess I should have thought about ordering them uh, at the time from uh, from VP Force. So that's that's on me, right, guys? So that's something I should have read up on and um, and it's easily solvable by, by the looks of things, so I'm, I'm quite pleased about that. If I can, I'd like to keep the gooseneck extension, um, but I feel I need to try a shorter, maybe, you know, 10, 100mm extension instead of, you know, this 200 here, uh, possibly even less, maybe, you know, 75mm or, or, or something like that, uh, with those vertical parts there. Um, and combined with the uh, with the limiter, so you, you because of the extension, you just don't really need this this range of motion. And it's quite incredible, actually, that that you're able to support that uh, you know in the uh, in the chair itself. So um, there we have it. The mounting options, as I've got it on my first uh, attempts and just sharing with people my my thoughts and experiences uh, on that. I think there's more to come. It's It feels good, it feels great. I think it could be better uh, and some adjustment options needed uh, and, and some more parts needed to get it um, in, in that kind of perfect uh, position. Anyway, I hope you found the, the video useful. Um, thanks for watching and uh, if you're still interested, I will see you on the next video.